really want to become an architect. I um, always, I talked to Vincent Corder, who was famous, uh, one of the three Corder brothers, who uh, was a designer, and he advised me to study architecture if I wanted to become a film designer, even though he came from a painting background. And that's why I, you know, started at the Bartlett as an external student, and I was an article with a firm of architects. And uh, then by a stroke of luck, my sister, who was working in publicity at the American Embassy, a man came in and said, we are making an American movie, the first American movie in uh, England, and we need uh, some props, you know, uh, American props. So she said, well, I've got a brother who draws rather well, and uh, he's trying to get in the film industry. So they said, well, why doesn't he see our art director? And that's how I got in, you know. I wanted to learn as much as I could about uh, uh, art direction. So it came reasonably natural to me. And um, I got on pretty quickly. And um, I was also lucky with some of the films I was working on. I was working with Oliver Metzel on Queen of Spades. Uh, I was art, one of the art directors on Around the World in 80 Days, Mike Todd. And uh, then I did a very important film for me, which was The Trials of Oscar Wilde with Peter Finch. And it was the first time that the film critics noticed me. And after that, of course, I started uh, the first Bond, Dr. No. It was a very cheap sort of whodunit film. You know, it's, it's all timing and a question of luck. My luck was that it was a very small budget film and we had locations in, in uh, Jamaica. Yeah. And I had to come back to design the settings at Pinewood. And there was nobody there from the film company to advise me or uh, so I decided that it was a good opportunity to do the sort of settings that I felt comfortable with and at the same time I felt we'd been seen so many films and some of them good but None of them that reflected our age of uh, technology and computers and so on. So I came up with this idea of the ceiling piece with a circle in it, like a big grill. And I built a set on a platform, slightly in perspective, and it was one of the sort of bare sets with just a door, a chair, the voice of uh, Dr. No, and a table and foreground with um, the tar tarantula in a cage. And uh, it became uh, very much a famous set and a lot of critics and it cost nothing you see and a lot of critics said it's really that set which started the whole feeling of the future one pictures uh, I mean it was not at all like other films uh, made but it was a very successful way of making these films so after Dr. No, I did Strangelove. Kubrick had just come over from America 
and uh, he was going to do Doctor Strange and, I, and he rang me up here and he said, can you come over? I'm staying at the Westbury Hotel. I want to talk to you. I think you can do my next film. And uh, obviously I learned a great deal of how he th thinks. He also learned how to take me in. And of course, uh, we had a very close personal relationship, which was very useful because I was the first one to know if he changed his mind on something. And every time he changed his mind, it was for the better. So it was a very exciting experience, and in hindsight, I think, probably one of the most successful sets I designed. The most important, obviously, and the biggest was in the war room. Because remember that the actors felt great in that surrounding. It was a sort of surrealistic, really, because it is probably an example. Today, when we talk about uh, computer-generated images and so on, when actors have to stand in front of screens, no sets. Their technique will change or has changed a lot because I grew up with actors who needed their surroundings to give a performance and to give, you know, it was very exciting. to doodle a lot, you know, on pieces of paper and very often a shape or a design or a doodle excited me to such an extent that I knew I had come up with something, you know. It was almost like having an orgasm, if you like to know. and. Um, after a strange love, and I think another bond, Kubrick uh, wanted me to work on uh, 2001 The Space Odyssey, whatever it was. And I wasn't immediately not very happy about it because I know that he had worked for a year with experts from NASA and I felt I had no artistic base to, to argue with him because he would immediately turn on that, oh, but these people say this, that and so on, you know. So I didn't do that and I, I really didn't want to do Barry Lyndon either. Because if we were disorganized, you see, he, he didn't have a script writer. And so Stanley himself had to do a lot of writing at night time. He got every painter and every book on the 18th century. Hogarth, Rawlinson, Gainsborough. And he was very proud of himself that he knew of it. But I think Stanley was at his best when he invented himself the photography or the staging of a scene because he had a fantastic eye. Whereas if you try to imitate a, a Hogarth or a Bain, you always know it is an imitation of somebody. And so we spent literally weeks and months goes through the period. Because also in a strange way 
he was more attracted to the Victorian era. And I had big fights with him because he liked the Victorian wallpaper. And I said, you can't shoot that, Stan, that's Victorian. How do you know? I said, I do know. <laughs> and I was continuously looking for location because once he was in Ireland, he decided he wanted Germany there too. So now you have to find Germany in Ireland. So I slept very little and in daytime I was chasing around trying to find new locations and so on. It was exhausting, you know. And when something didn't work for him, the location, even though he liked it, can't find another one, you know. So, and uh, I had a call uh, during the night and said, uh, You've just won an Oscar, you know, yeah. which was quite exciting, you know. But um, it was not a happy experience for me, and uh, I became very ill on it. You know. I think things have changed, but the basic ideas and talent remains the same. You, see. you know, I read a script. And if I thought I could improve a certain scene or I talked to the director about it and so on, and I don't think that changes. That still remains the same. If you get offered a subject and so on, and you discuss it first with the director, and you get his ideas and his concept, but then you might come up in certain instances with your ideas and concepts. And uh, very often that's the best way to make a film, you know, if all the crew, I mean the creative crew, the cameraman, the designer, and uh, the director see eye to eye you can also experiment with new ideas and so on. And I've always found in the past that if the picture is a happy picture, it normally turns out to be a very good picture too.